Today I want to take a look at Fetch XML Builder and how to query Microsoft Dataverse tables. Here we are looking at FetchXMLBuilder.com, which is shipped in, as part of the XRM toolbox.com and we have a download button in the top right corner which will install it to your PC. I prefer using the chocolatey route so we're going to open the command prompt. Here we can put in cinst xrm toolbox with dash y to continue the yes prompt. It gives you an output folder in green where the software is installed to so we're going to type in the word start and then paste that same path to open and examine the folder contents. Here we can right click on xrmtoolbox.com and run as admin. When we come to the application for the first time, we're prompted with a list of plugins, extensions that we want to add. It's called the XRM Toolbox Tool Library. And Tool Library gives us a menu of different things we can use. It's actually interesting. It has a bunch of the votes, download counts. If it is installed, which version is already installed, we have the release date, description, all kinds of things. So over here, we're actually going to type in fetch XML builder. There it is. It has high ranking on stars. We're going to click the install button in the top left. Go ahead and load that. Very quickly, it comes back installation done. We click OK to continue. Highlighting the line item gives a description of what it is and what it's all about. And going back to the website for Fetch XML Builder, there's more background of what it's used for. We've got some screenshots here. You know, things you want to focus on. Essentially, there's the top left tree, which shows the query design. There's bottom left for actions, which is the best place to be working for making changes. And then in the center, we have our results. And in the bottom, we have our XML. Clicking on Fetch XML Builder, we're prompted to connect to an organization. We can click New Connection in the top left, and we're prompted with a few choices. We're going to look at the Dataverse icon for Microsoft Login Control in the top right, and we're going to open the Microsoft Login Control, and we're going to choose Office 365 at the top. Skip all the checkboxes and hit the Login button, and you're going to get the normal OAuth login flow. This is what we see when we're working at make.powerapps.com, when we're working with Flow, SharePoint Online, the admin portal, and here you're going to put in your username and your password. So with our username in, we'll go ahead and click Next. We'll click Work or School Account. We'll put in our password. And now we see a prompt with which environment we want to work with. Back in our browser, if we go to make.powerapps.com, in the top right corner, we'll see a menu of environments. We can click on NA default. It's the only environment that I have available. So we want to match that when we're in the client. We're going to click on NA default because that lines up and matches with what we see in the web experience. Click the login button to continue. And here we see connection validated. We'll click finish button. And now we're in the Fetch XML Builder Canvas. So for making a new query, there's a couple of options on the pull-down menu. We're just going to click New, kind of go with the default settings. It says Top 50 from Entity, and it's loading a list of the available entities. If we click Entity in the tree diagram up here in the top left corner, what we'll see down at the bottom are the quick actions we can take, and red for a missing required field. On this one, I'm going to type in the word Contact. Go ahead and select the contacts table and hit F5 to execute. Coming back, we see a result table with a lot of the contacts. We'll scroll over. We can see first name, last name, blank row at the bottom, Jane, John, test one, two, three, four. Back into the browser, if I go into the contacts table and click the data tab on the far right side, I can verify same information. Jane and John, test one, two, three, four, blank row, that's a match. Into Fetch XML, we can actually look at the code behind this and get familiar with how it's executing the query. Fetch top 50, name is contact. Back on the results view, we can start making changes. And as you highlight different parts of the tree in the top left, the quick actions will adjust to match. So here we can do select attributes, and maybe we only want to pick out the first name. That's fine. We can do select attributes, pick out maybe the last name and pick out the address one state. 
Go ahead and make a couple of different fields, F5 to execute. So now we're getting a more narrow result set. You know, one of the things to notice in using this, uh, I guess we can set it back to all attributes and run the query. Uh, go ahead and clear out these other ones. One thing I wanted to highlight for you guys is that when we execute a query in fetch XML, it's very technical. We're getting all sorts of columns with very technical names across the top. When we do this in the browser, we get more of the friendly names and a very limited view. I mean, this default rendering only gives me four columns. That's it, four columns. But when I'm over in Fetch XML, I get back all of the columns. Makes it a lot easier to get familiar with the technical names and what the values look like, if they're GUIDs, integer, boolean, string, whatnot. So back over here on selecting the entity, we're going to do this a little differently. We want to make a group by clause. We want to count how many are from each different state. So in our data set, we have some repeating patterns here with address one, state or province. It looks like we have four for Indiana and one for the others. OK, how can we make a group by? The way we're going to get that is going into the contact, going into fetch, and down here we have an option for aggregate with a little blue arrow. That blue arrow opens Microsoft documentation to explain what the aggregate property is about. If we go into a specific property, let's say we want to bring in address one state and bring that into our query. Yeah, we can go ahead and highlight it. Down here we see group by with another blue arrow. That takes us to a different Microsoft article. So the way that the UI has these blue articles to kind of drill into the MS documentation is really cool because it lets you learn more about the feature, see some sample code, and kind of learn the language while also building queries. So here we're going to go back up to our fetch statement. We're going to turn on aggregate. There are three steps to making a group by. Number one is that aggregate is on. Okay, we want to do an aggregate query. Cool. The second thing we need to do is a group by field. So we're going to turn on a group by field. In this case, we're grouping by state because that's how we're grouping things to do our aggregate count function. So number one, aggregate is on. Number two, group by state. And number three, we need a field that we're counting. So in this case, I'm going to go back to select attributes. I'm going to look up the contact ID because I know that's a system field. It's a unique identifier. This is our primary key for the table. And it's always available. It's always populated. We're going to highlight it. And down here in the bottom, we need to pick an alias and an aggregate, right? So I'm going to put down here contact count. And the aggregate function is going to be a count. You have other options. You can do min, max, sum, average. We're going to count how many of those IDs we have. We're not looking to apply a calculation against them. So with those selected, we'll go ahead and check out one more thing on the group by. I forgot to put an alias down. So here we're going to put it just the word state, kind of a simple title. and. Actually, we're going to make it contact state. That looks good. OK. Awesome. And so now we have our results set. We can see Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, and there's our count of four. So this is using three different things. The query itself has aggregate on, which we can see here is aggregate true. We have the group by. And then we have the aggregate count. So there's a three-step process. We want aggregate on. We need to group by something. And then we need, in this case, count with something else. So there's two different fields. And we tell aggregate yes at the top of the query. This provides us the full XML expression that we need. And if we execute the query, we can see the data coming back successfully. So in this demo, you learned how to install the XRM toolbox how to install the Fetch XML Builder, how to connect to your environment, how to view tables, and also how to do a group by. Thanks for watching.